Hi, this video course is on learning computer vision with Python and OpenCV. I hope you are really excited about this course. I'm definitely sure at the end of this course, you will gain enormous knowledge on computer vision and you will have a toolbox with several image processing techniques ready. This is Kathiravan, completing my master's degree in computer vision. I'm currently working as a data scientist in Texas, USA. I'm interested in medical image researching and robotics. You can find me in my LinkedIn. Before getting started with OpenCV, let's see the overview of this course. In section 1, we will provide some insights and installation procedures of OpenCV Python, which work great for image processing techniques and computer vision. In section 2, we give the insight of working with images in frequency domain and helps in finding the edges in the image using image gradients and segmenting the image. In section 3, we detect features from images and use it for detecting the objects in images. For example, in this section, we will detect faces in the images using features captured from several positive and negative images. In section 4, we will learn about getting started with videos and do the background subtraction and calculate the optical flow of the object in the video using different methods and finally track the object in the video using mean shift and cam shift. Basic Python programming, NumPy and Matplotlib are the prerequisites of this course. Let's get started. The different morphological operations are erosion, dilation, opening, closing, morphological gradient, top hat, black hat, and structuring elements. The first one is erosion. The pixels in the original image are considered as one, only if the pixels under 2D convolutional kernel is one. Pixels near the boundaries are eroded based on the kernel size. It is useful for removing white noises or detaching to connected objects. The function is cv.erode. I have a spoiler alert for you. We are going to see one more example on this morphological operations in image segmentation using watershed algorithm. Let's look into the code for erosion. So here we have used cv.erode and after erosion this is the eroded image. And this erode method removed all the white noises in the input image. The second one is dilation. It is the opposite of erosion. The resultant image pixel element will be 1 if at least one pixel under 2D convolutional curl is 1. This in turn increases the white region of the image or increases the size of the foreground object. In noise removal, dilation is performed after erosion. So for dilation, we use the method called cv.dilate. Let's look into the code. Here we use cv to dilate. What it exactly does is it increases the white region of the image. So this is the input image and this is the dilated one. Later it looks so different. The third one is opening. Opening is otherwise known as erosion followed by dilation. It removes the noise in the image. So we use the function cv.morphologyx with the parameter cv.morph underscore open. Let's look into the code. So here in the code we use morphologyx with the parameter morph underscore open. So how it exactly works is erosion followed by dilation. So this is the input image, this is the opening image. The fourth one is closing. Closing is otherwise known as opposite of opening. So here dilation followed by erosion. So we use the OpenCV's method cv.morphologyx with morph underscore close as the parameter. So like I said morphology underscore x and morph underscore close. So how it is different from opening is like in the closing image you can see more of white region in the image. Which means first we perform the erosion operation and then we go for the dilation one. The fifth one is morphological gradient. Morphological gradient is nothing but the difference between the dilation and erosion of the image. The resultant image will appear as the outline of the image. Let's look into the code. So here we have morphology x that is like we have been using it for a long while I guess. And with the parameter cv2.morph underscore gradient is the thing. So here is the input image and here is the difference between dilation and erosion operation in the image. Next one is top hat. Top hat is otherwise known as difference between the opening of an image and the original image. Let's look into the code. Okay, so here we use morph underscore top hat parameter for morphology x method. So here is the output. What's happening here really is like it calculates the difference between opening of an image and the original image. The next one is black hat. Black hat is otherwise known as the difference between closing of an input image and the input image. And we have a parameter morph underscore black hat. Let's check the code. So how black hat works is like it calculates the closing of the image and then you have the input image. So finally finding the difference between closing of the input image and the original image is known as the black hat operation. So the last one is structuring element. So getting structuring element function from OpenCV gives you the desired shape and size of the kernel. So we can get morph underscore rec, we can get morph underscore ellipse or cross 
or whatever the function you want. Like rect in the sense like it will give you the rect shape kernel. Generally, in certain images, the pixel values are skewed only on a certain range. For example, brighter images will have almost all the pixel intensities of brighter values, that is around the range of 240 to 255. On the contrary, an ideal image will have pixel intensity values from all regions of the image. So I think this might have given you a good intuition about the pixel intensity distribution in images. So in this case, we need a transformation function that takes the input pixels and returns the equalized output pixels. So we're going to use this function numpy.histogram. So for using that, we need to flatten the image first. Let's look into the code now. So here we use numpy.histogram and I'm giving the flattened image as the input for histogram. So from the given example, it is understood that pixels lie in the brighter region. So we need to have a full spectrum to transform the image into a good one. That's what histogram equalization does. So in this numpy array usage, we have a master array. For the master array, all operations are performed on the non-master elements. Explaining master array is beyond the scope of this video. This method gives you a lookup table which helps in mapping the input pixels to the output pixels. We can just apply transform on the image. The practical use case of histogram equalization is in face recognition. Before feeding the face images for training, histogram equalization is applied. Even if the image was a darker one, equalization almost get the same result as that of a brighter image. Hence, equalization technique is used to make all the regions of the image with a better lighting condition. The next one is histogram equalization with OpenCV. We can achieve the histogram equalization in a similar way. Some issues with histogram equalizations are that histogram considers the global contrast of the image. So if we have very bright object in the image, by applying equalization to the image will make the image lose the information in the brighter region. So for OpenCV based histogram equalization, we use equalize hist. Let's look into the code now. So I perform equalize hist operation here. So this is the input image and this is the equalized histogram. So if you try to plot the histogram, you can find that the pixel intensity distribution will be in all regions. So like I discussed before, we can solve this problem using adaptive histogram equalization. Some issues with histogram equalization are histograms consider the global contrast of the image. So if you have a bright object in the image, by applying equalization to the image, will make the image lose information in the brighter area. So we can solve this problem using adaptive histogram equalization. Here we divide the image into tiles with a default size of 8 by 8 in OpenCV. Histogram equalization is applied on each of these blocks as usual. If there is any noise in the image, histogram equalization will amplify the noise. To solve this problem again, we can apply contrast limiting. By default, 40 is the contrast limit in OpenCV. If any histogram bin is above 40, those pixels are clipped and distributed uniformly to other bins prior to histogram equalization. After equalization, to remove these artifacts in tile borders, bilinear interpolation is applied. Yes, background subtraction is a major pre-processing step for the video. The first method is, so we need to extract the moving foreground from the static background. It's gonna be really easy if the image of the background is available. The first method is background subtractor emoji. This is a Gaussian mixer based background subtraction or a segmentation algorithm. It used a method to model each background pixel by a mixture of K Gaussian distributions. K value range from 3 to 5. The weights of the mixer represent the timestamp that each color stay in the video. The probable colors are the video background colors which stay in the video longer and static. For achieving this, we need to create a background subtractor object using create background subtractor emoji method. It has the parameters like number of Gaussian mixtures, length of history and threshold etc. You can play around with these parameters in the video. Let's look into the code. So here in the code, we are going to use the same using both video sample. Let me run the code. Okay, here is the thing. The background is subtracted from the video. The second method is background subtractor emoji 2. This is a Gaussian mixture based background subtraction or a segmentation algorithm. The most important feature here is that it selects the appropriate number of Gaussian mixture for each pixel in the video. Also, it provides adaptability for varying scenes and illumination. Let's look into the code. In background subtractor emoji, we have different parameters. In emoji 2, we have an option of detecting shadow in the video. If detect shadow is equal to true, then it detects and marks the shadow in the video. Shadows are marked in gray color. One more important thing is, it decreases the speed of the background subtraction. Let me run this code. So it looks like better than emoji. The last background subtractor method is background subtractor GMG. This algorithm makes use of statistical estimation of the image and per pixel Bayesian segmentation. By default, in OpenCV, it uses 120 frames for modeling the background. 
and deploys Bayesian inference for the probabilistic foreground estimation. New observations are given more weights than the old to differentiate the illumination. Morphological operations like opening and closing, which we discussed in the section 2, are used to remove the noise. You can try to implement this yourself as a homework today.